Hey guys, welcome back for part two of the Chevy Silverado crankshaft position sensor video. And uh, got a little present here from Rock Auto. It's always, I feel like it's Christmas time, you know, every time we get one of these packages. So let's see what we got for this truck. <clears throat> Their main, main prize, okay, let's see here. AC Delco, that's what the sensor looks like. Made in China, mainland. Wow. Oh well. Well, it's, it is AC Delco. <laughs> I ordered the best one, I swear. At least it's made in the mainland, right? So it's gotta work. So we're gonna pop that in. I also got a OEM Denso oxygen sensor for that, uh, take care of that lazy slow response code. And then a couple uh, AC belt here and a tensioner that was seized up. But anyways, let's, uh, let's do the crankshaft position sensor and take a look at some waveforms after the repair. Alright, got the old one out. Just one 10 millimeter head bolt here and kind of use a pry bar. That o-ring was a little, you know, a little rusted on the outside there. So anyways, match them up. They look identical. Uh, maybe get a little oil on here and you know lubricate the new o-ring we'll pop it in next shot will be uh, the new waveform all right guys truck is running look at this beautiful crankshaft position signal dropping all the way to zero as it should and the high is at about 12 volts so you can see the min max right there so from 0 to 12, that's that's a good signal. So remember before, it was dropping down to about 1, and uh, I presume that when it wasn't starting, or when it was stalling on the customer, it wasn't dropping below 2. So there you go. 100% um, verified repair. So uh, that's, that's the way to do it. Scope is your friend. So... After replacement of the crankshaft position sensor, we saw our amplitude, that looks great. There's one other detail that you need to keep in mind, and that is called the crank CKP variation relearn procedure. So, uh, I'll show you where that's located. So, in our functional test right here, there's CKP variation relearn. And uh, that's a procedure of basically synchronizing the crank and the cam. And that is very important for, well, it's important for everything, but mostly for misfire monitoring. So on our data display, we can go to our misfire data. And remember uh, a customer complaint before the stalling, before anything, was that the check engine light was flashing when they're towing a trailer up the hill but their power you know the, it's not like the engine died or anything or stumbled they said the power was there the only thing was the check engine light was flashing and we had the P0300 random misfire code okay um, and I talked to my good friend Eric at South Main Auto actually we uh, call each other pretty frequently you know with diagnostic questions and he gives me tips on how to remove rusty fasteners <laughs> I mean it's a it's kind of a great synergy but he just had a Chevy truck in that had no running issues but the check engine light was flashing uh, especially when you're cruising under load you know torque runners locked up and he said he saw misfires on cylinders 1 and 6 even though the cylinder or the engine didn't stumble or anything and uh, the way he got around that was he did this crank relearn procedure and that went away you actually see look at that we're getting misfires on cylinder 8 and cylinder 1 right now we're just idling I don't feel any bucking or anything so we're gonna go for a little test drive before doing the relearn procedure and actually see uh, 
um, if our check engine light starts flashing with this new sensor that we just installed. So, you know, if it starts flashing, I'll turn the camera on, show you what's going on, then we'll do the relearn procedure and see if that, uh, you know, resets the cam crank correlation. Alright, so I drove the truck for about five miles, varying loads, and uh, here's what we see. It is recording misfires, especially on cylinder six. There's some on eight. Uh, we can look at other histories. Let's see. Misfire history one. There's some on there. Can't zoom out anymore. It only records a thousand frames. But anyways, see there's nothing on three. Miss history five. There's some on five, so five, one, six, eight. They all have some misfires recorded. So let's what what we're gonna do now is go to our functional tests. Let's do our variation relearn. Alright, set parking brake, block wheels. <clears throat> cycle ignition from off to on. Let's see. Alright, continue. Comply and hold brake pedal, start an idle engine. AC is off. It's in park. HVAC is off. Alright, continue. Next up, do not let engine or accelerate past fuel cutoff. Cutoff should occur between four and five grand. Okay, continue. Excel to full throttle until fuel, fuel cut off. All right, here we go. This is what it tells me to do in the instructions. Guess that's it, huh? <laughs> that was pretty easy. All right. So I guess uh, back to our data. Let's look at our misfires. All right, I'm gonna keep driving it and see what happens. All right, after another few miles under load, coasting, cruising, we got all zeros. This is sweet. So that variation relearn, it's got to be done after, uh, you know, if you're seeing random misfires that don't really exist or if you're replacing your crankshaft position sensor, just do the reset and uh, yeah, should be good to go. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hey guys, so that question with 5 volts versus 10 volts on that crankshaft position signal wire is really kind of bugging me. Right now I'm on it, it's at 5 volts. The truck's been standing, I don't know, for a couple few hours here. And But initially it was, you know, 10.4 or whatever. So, and I'm definitely on the right wire. There's no way you can cross, cross the pins and I pull it out. You know, I'm definitely on that pin, definitely making contact, and 5.0 volts is not, it's not a coincidence. <clears throat> if I disconnect the ground, you know, our ground is definitely good. Steady 5 volts. So let me start it up and see what happens here. Starts right up. And what do we see on our scope? What the heck? Five volts steady on the crank, 2.5 on the cam. Are you kidding me?
this battery voltage. I'm definitely on pin 73 on the brown and white wire. It's really blowing my mind. Fourteen volts. Battery voltage? Let me see how that's possible. Here's our two point five again, so I don't know if I'm cross probing the pins or or what. Okay, that's a neighboring pin. That's at 14 volts, interesting. Man, this is uh, ridiculous. All right, here we go. Um, Drop that down. So there's our cam signal. Obviously we had it, so my probing at the connector seems to be kind of weird. You need to really aim your pin right. So see, that's a neighboring pin. That's 2.1, take it out. Point four is nothing. Right there, two point one. So you think you're in the right pin, but but you're not. There we go. That's. So I'm wondering now if on the crank, if I'm on the wrong. Oh man, that's crazy. All that time. So I was on the wrong pin. So let's see, check this out. If I, if I back probe it like this. <laughs> it depends how you put your pin in. There's our 5 volts. So I was actually probing the pin next to it it looks like. Like this orange one. There it is. So the lesson here is be very careful with your back probing. Okay, there's our cam, there's our crank. Everything looks beautiful. We weren't missing anything. I'm just tempted to unplug the cam and see if it sets a code. That looks great. So I'm just gonna unplug the cam and see if it sets the code. Let's see if we can do this. Slide. Reach back here where it's all hot. Find the connector. If I can. Great. Oh man. There's a whole bunch of sensors back here. It's hard to feel which one's which, but... Alright, let's see. Okay, I think I got the connector, so I'm plugging it right now. Okay, cam is unplugged. The engine did not stumble. At all. That is amazing. The GM must have really good backup strategy. You can see our cam signal is missing now. Our crank is... That was just the bad connection. So our crank is good. So question, million dollar question is, did we set a code? Scanner, display codes. All right, here we go. CMP sensor circuit signal low. Okay, great. So they recognize the cam, but it's running fantastic. I mean, <laughs> 
it's like uh, let's see if it starts up on just the crank sensor. Just running on the crank. <clears throat> so, all right, I'm I'm happy with this. So, seeing the five volts on that signal wire, that was just a miss back probe on the computer connector. So maybe sometimes stabbing a hole wouldn't be too bad, you know, to avoid that kind of confusion. And uh, now we know that the, the engine needs at least one input signal to recognize it's missing the other. So this is all, you know, all learning, learning experience. It's not just a waste of time playing around with you know, with toys. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, that's it. I mean, I already have the crank sensor ordered up. I think that's all, uh, all this engine will need. So, I guess uh, once that's in, I'll give you an after shot, but you already saw what a good waveform looks like. Um, but yeah, that'll be it. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching.